Hello and welcome to The Football Terrace with me Adam Charles from The Fifth Official. Guys, please make sure you like this video, comment on this video, subscribe to the channel and head over to The Fifth Official's YouTube page and follow us there or subscribe to the channel there, uh, like all those videos, comment on the videos and follow us on Twitter at TFO Show. Ah, uh, another day, another Arsenal loss. Where and when will it end? I just don't know. Um, this is the ninth game without a win. And it's most definitely the worst run in my lifetime, without a doubt. So in, in the time I started watching football, this is the worst I've ever seen Arsenal. And that's not even just um, rhetorically saying it now. That is, it's a matter of fact. Uh, and I think someone told me that it's the worst run in the club's history in the Premier League. I, I don't know if that's that's true. Um, it sounds a bit dramatic, but you know what? At this point, I'm willing to believe that anything is true because the way Arsenal are playing and the stuff I saw last night, yeah, it, I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be shocked. We are a team devoid of ideas. We are a team devoid of an identity. We're a team devoid of belief. We don't know what we're doing. We don't know what's happening. And yet we keep trudging along, hoping that things are going to change. And they just don't. They just don't. Now, let me tell you why I'm a little bit upset. I'm tell you why, why I'm annoyed. So, hmm, where do I begin? I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed at, at um, I'm annoyed at Lundberg. I'm annoyed at Freddie Lundberg. And the reason I'm annoyed at Lundberg is because this guy um, has got this narrative he hasn't created it admittedly but he's he's part of a narrative where by people are saying he knows the identity of arsenal he knows uh the beliefs he knows he knows what we're about he knows the the, the culture and the ethos of the club now one of the things that Arsenal fans have loved, and when we used to say, even though we're not winning trophies, even though we're not um, performing well, even though we're getting bullied by teams like Brighton uh, and they were our bogey team for time, we used to lo lo love the fact that we played brilliant football, the fact that we, we, we banged out winger ball, the fact that we were playing uh, the British version of Barcelona tippy-tappy football. We were that team. And yet, last night, I saw Arsenal playing long ball football. <laughs> I, I, saw Ars I saw Dapper Louise picking it up and just whacking it. Just whacking it. Completely bypassing the midfield. Um, and the thing is, when I, I saw it the first time, I said, fair enough. Got to switch it up sometimes. We've been berated for playing out from the back. I've not once said that because I, I appreciate the ambition. I I'm saying not do it all the time, but... I like the fact that we play out from the back because that's how you build attacks. That's how the best teams do it. Um, and if we want to be a best, the, one of the best teams, that's what we've got to do as well. Fine. Just don't do it every time, especially when you can see it's not working in-game. But I saw him do it once. That's saw him do it twice. Then I saw him do, do him do it a third time. And I said, are we, are we playing long ball football? Is this, is this what we do now? And I went back and I watched the Norwich game. Yeah, yeah, we're playing long ball football. So I'm a little bit annoyed that at Freddie Lundberg, because I think, Fred, you know what Arsenal fans are about. You're meant to understand the culture. You're meant to understand what we want. And, and long ball football ain't it. It's just not it. It never has been. It never, ever has been. And you know what? It's like, we've seen managers like Di Matteo, who um, won the Champions League with Chelsea. And it wasn't in the most pretty or most stylistic or artistic fashion and he got dropped he got dropped after winning the champions league um even ancelotti who did bits with chelsea uh, won the double he got dropped because what's his name didn't even like the way he played football um abramovich and you have come to arsenal as the manager and now you want to play long ball football i'm a little bit annoyed with freddie I'm, I'm annoyed with freddie for that but maybe maybe he he looks at it and says this is the best i can do with this bunch of players that i've got fine which brings me to my next point why have we got um the players that we've got <laughs> 
Why, why do we have the players that we have? Now, David Luiz, Xhaka. And if any of you have ever heard me speak about Arsenal before, you'll know that I love Xhaka. I love him. But it's time to let that man go. It's time to let him go. Why do we have the players that we have? Why is Xhaka still playing in the midfield? Why is Joe Willock starting at number 10 and Ozil on the wing? Why is Aubameyang playing right wing? Why did we not start Pepe? Why? <laughs> Why? There are so many questions to ask. And, and, then, and then I look a bit further and I ask myself, do I, can I really blame the, play, the players? Because, you know, they have to adhere to tactical instructions and they can only do their best on the pitch. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm being harsh. Maybe I'm being harsh towards Freddie Lundberg. But then I say, who else is there that I can blame? The board. So you start to look at what the board have done. And the board have decided that Freddie Lundberg, the man who was an assistant to the guy we've just fired, is the best person for the job. Hmm. I don't know if that's fair. I don't know if that's sensible. I don't, know, I don't know if that's the right thing to do. The man who has no, um, no experience managing a club at all. Uh, the man who, as I said, knows the ethos of the club, but we've, we can look at Manchester United to see that ethos and understanding alone doesn't necessarily get you results. And I just, I just, I just have to question Josh Kroenke, Stan Kroenke, Vishay Ven, Ven Ketesham, Edu, Rao Sanelli, all of them. What are you doing? What are you doing with my club? What do you see? Can't you understand your own behaviour? I'm reading that these guys are are touting the name um, Nuno, Nuno Santo to, to see whether Arsenal fans would take to that or whether that would be an acceptable manager for us. Is this a game? Is this a game to you? Like, what? Don't, don't put stuff out there just for the sake of it to see if we buy it or to see if we don't buy it. Move with sense. There's managers out there there's managers out there, and I don't care what anyone says, loyalty, all this ethics and stuff like that, it's, it's rubbish. Money talks. You throw the bag at Pochettino, he's going to come. You throw the bag at Rodgers, he's going to come. You throw the bag at Allegri, Luis Enrique, all of them will come to Arsenal. I don't care if he's managed Tottenham. He doesn't care if he's managed Tottenham. And I even read yesterday that um, he's out of the running for the buying job. So where's he going? Where, where's he going? Manchester United, who, who just appointed Oli. That's not happening. That is not happening. I promise you, if we throw the bag at these people, they will come. So my question is, what, what, what are you doing? What are these guys doing? What, what, why can't they understand that the longer they take to appoint a manager is the worst it's going to be for Arsenal? We have a horrible set of, of games coming up where we play Everton, we play Bournemouth, we play Chelsea, we play Man City, we even play Manchester United. We could be well, well, well out of the top four race by that time. To be fair, we're out of it now, but we could be gone. Everton could even appoint another manager and overtake us in that time. So we could be done out here by the time um, that run is over. And you want to keep Frederick Lundberg, the man that's playing long ball, the man that was under Unai Emery, and the man that has no managerial experience, that's who you want to lead this club during that run of games. Now, the thing that makes this whole thing worse is that when Tottenham fired their arguably most successful manager, they appointed another one within 12 hours. So, what? That's big club energy. That's a club that has an idea. That's a club, and I, don't, even, don't even get it twisted. I don't think it's going to work long term, but short term, Daniel Levy knows that Tottenham really need a trophy to try and um, really consolidate this new era, really usher in this new era. Mourinho needed a new... Uh, challenge to try and repair his name and it's it's a, it's it's a partnership that works 
There are so many managers. Even just Allegri is just there. The man is free. He's available. Why are we waiting? What are we waiting for? I don't understand. And I, I hate, I hate complaining because this this relegation form that we're in, this this terrible football that I'm watching. I saw Dale Stevens last night banging ball. The guy looked like Prime Busquets. Man was dinking balls, doing this, this, and I thought. What is going on? Ah, oh, why? Why is this happening to Arsenal? I hate complaining. I hate it. I hate it because I like to be positive. I like to try and support my team through the good and the bad. But when I see repeated, consistent mistakes, I have to question it and I begin to get annoyed. Josh, Stan, Raul, Edu, um, Vishai, you lot move with sense. Appoint someone quickly and appoint them right. Appoint the right person and make sure that they get into this team, we start to work and make sure that they never play David Luiz and Mustafi as a partnership ever again. Yeah? Please. And make sure they start Pepe too. I don't even know what happens next. I don't know what we do, but just pray for Arsenal. Because it's going to get long. It's going to get much, much worse before it gets better. And by Christmas, boy, we could be 12th. Hmm. Imagine that.